So we started by removing this interior trim piece. Uh, we're going to check and see that the new one lines up here with the old holes. Lines up for the uh, fit as well. Looks like it's going to be a good fit. This is the trim plate from the new one. And I think it's going to work out just fine. All right, so this is how the exterior of the vent looks. It looks like they never put any sealant on these uh, screw caps here for the to hold the cap on. Those are usually a, a source of leaks. And obviously this lap sealant is completely failed. So we're gonna scrape this away. We're gonna take this cap off and start to get to the screws and start getting this thing removed and uh, put the new one in. Time to remove these rusty screws. We got this cap off, place it to the side here. And this um, old lap sealant is in pretty bad shape all the way around, but I think once we get the screws out and we get this pried up, we'll be able to scrape that sealant off uh, a lot easier and get that cleaned up. Looks like the ones in the top are a little bit less rusted. My, uh, my guess is that water was coming in through this cap on the screw holes that were never lap sealed. And we had a bunch of water collecting down up in this part. Um, thankfully, due to the design of this, it has to be a lot of rain before it would build up in here and start coming in. So I think we stayed dried inside, stayed dry inside the bathroom, but uh, Quite a bit of After some struggles with a couple of these screws here, uh, partially drilled some of them out. Some of them eventually just came out. Some of them required some uh, persuasion by other means. So those are all out. I'm now just uh, going around and getting all the um, sealant loose. It looks like they use some sort of, I'm not sure, some sort of uh, I don't know, rubberized sort of epoxy or a uh, rubber cement of some kind. But um, it's definitely not uh, Dicor or uh, Butyl tape. But uh, just going to keep working it and uh, try and pry it out of here. We had this uh, taped up overnight. About to dry fit the new fan and uh, start applying the butyl tape around the edges and uh, got the new stainless hardware to get it all mounted. Hopefully the holes all line up. I think they should. It's basically a direct replacement. Let's see how it looks. We got the, the hole pretty well cleaned up. We might give this a little uh, wipe down with some acetone or some alcohol or something to try to Make sure this is nice and clean, but I already used some crud cutter and uh, scraped everything off with a razor blade and uh, looks looks pretty good. So this is the new unit with the cover on it. And we pretty much drop in and take this cover off so that we can see how the uh, mounting holes line up. We've got the uh, new fan dry fitted into the uh, hole and we've got pretty good alignment. You can see most of the holes here align pretty well. Some of these here up on top. Not quite as well, but we'll be able to make that work. Just a little bit of wiggle room. I'm going to make some alignment marks here along the side so that once I have the butyl tape around and these holes are actually blocked, I won't be able to see the alignment. So uh, I'll count on my little hash mark here to let me know where it's lined up. You want to make sure that you have this drain hole, which is a little hole on the side here on the bottom end of the, of the fan housing. Uh, that way if any water does get inside here, it can drain out right here. We use these butt splice connectors to hook up our fan wiring. This one had three wires, so this is connecting on to another device in the, uh, in the camper. Now it's time to test it out, see if our electrical connection is working. And the fan turns on, so we're in good shape. We are ready to 
uh, shrink the heat shrink and then get on to the physical mounting and sealing of the hole. Now that the electrical is tested, I'm dry fitting again so that I can mark my alignment because when I go back in again, it'll have the uh, butyl tape and some of the uh, lap sealant on. So what I've done is I put a couple of pieces of tape here along the side and now I'm just gonna make a little hash mark so that I can tell where these two pieces line up. All right, now that this is aligned, um, I can uh, remove those pieces of tape later once I get a first a few screws going. Uh, but this will help me make sure that once the butyl tape is blocking these holes, I'll still know how to line it up properly. As I was going through some testing here, I noticed that I guess this is what qualifies as a grommet these days on this fan. I'm not too happy about that. It is potentially a spot where it could uh, short out or uh, you know worse so I am going to uh, hit that with a little bit of hot glue um, right in there help, help hold those uh, wires in place provide some strain relief and uh, some insulation actually I heat shrunk these butt splice connectors and then I also wrap them with some regular vinyl black vinyl electrical tape Gave him a nice tight wrap. It's kind of belt and suspenders, but I uh, wasn't too happy with how my uh, shrink wrap turned out. I had to use this little uh, butane torch instead of my heat gun. Post COVID times, you can't always get what you want. So my heat gun is in transit. In the meantime, I used this little butane torch. It worked fine, but you know, better safe than sorry. This little add-on that we put here uh, where the uh, wires come out of the housing, I think it's gonna be really good. It's already hardened up pretty well. And uh, it's going to provide a little additional, little additional strain relief. We have applied the uh, butyl tape all the way around the fan. It's a bit like working with uh, with hot taffy, so it uh, doesn't have to be the prettiest thing. It's just got to be nice and solid all the way around. Got that ready. Left a little bit of a lip so that I can add some of this uh, Dicor uh, sealant. I'm going to add just a bit around the edge here. I'm going to pipe it around and uh, then uh, that'll have something to cohere to uh, when I put a bead around the outside as well. So uh, this, this, uh, this nice gentleman here has done a great job of making a lap sealant self-leveling product. He seems to be quite proud of, of himself and quite happy about it. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident this is gonna be good stuff. It is fully mounted. The screws have been put in. We had to use slightly bigger screws in a couple cases because uh, they were really uh, rusted out and that kind of uh, caused the holes to get stripped out too. So replace them with stainless steel screws from Home Depot, four or five to a bag. You want to use stainless for any external application. It's just a smart thing to do. Don't cheap out on the screws. These were a combination of number eight and number 10, uh, mostly three quarter inch long screws uh, lined up with the holes just right and then uh, we made sure to put some die core on all of the connection points basically anytime this fan is meeting the rv it is sealed up with die core that includes over the screws we're pretty well set we're going to wait for this to set up a little bit and then we're going to come back and we're going to mount this uh, cover. The, uh, the lid has been put back on and that almost wraps it up. I'm gonna hit these with a little bit of Dicor to avoid any water getting underneath the lid. So we're gonna let this set up and dry real good. Probably leave this open for a day or two and then uh, give it a final test. But the fan is running and uh, the lid is mounted. Now just time to seal this up with a tiny little dab of Dicor right there and there. And finally right here. And that should do it.